Hey guys, all right, today we're going to be looking at some Shashki. This is Russian Checkers. <clears throat> this is a game that I played with the white pieces uh, against my brother in law. Uh, and um, <clears throat> I, I love this game. If you don't know how to play Russian Checkers, it is like American Checkers, except you can jump backwards. That's the only time the pieces move backwards. They can jump backwards, and then if you get a king, it moves basically like a super-powered jumpy bishop in, in chess. This game doesn't really involve that much in terms of bishop moves, um, or king moves, I should say. Just a little bit at the end, so uh, not very important for looking at this game. But the important thing to know is that you can jump backwards, uh, and it's uh, can-take, must-take as well. Um, so, all right, so I, I start with... Uh, C3 to D4, um, you know, if you know anything about opening theory in this game, the point for white is usually, in top-level games, going to be to control the C5 square and to turn that into an outpost. Um, the most common move for white at the top levels is actually C3 to B4. Uh, that would end up transposing back into the game um, because this is the main line. Here, takes, takes, and then usually black, uh, well, black has his pick of moves here, but um, uh, something like this, trying to get black's own counterplay established on this F4 point, that's probably the main line. <clears throat> um, C3 to D4 uh, is not, is maybe not as favored, Um at the highest levels, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, I think a lot of players don't actually want to go into this line. So either here, and then there's two ways to retake. Um, this is a fairly common way. Uh, there, you know, and and whether or not uh, black actually fully equalizes in this line, well, all checkers is probably a draw anyway. Uh, the main line here can continues with a3 to b4. And the point for white is going to be to follow up with b2 to a3 and then try to reestablish control over this c5 square again. So you, you often see things like, okay, you know, h8 to g7, and white plays out this way. Uh, maybe black comes up, and, you know, white is looking for a good opportunity to try to get b4 to c5 in. If it's premature now, then, you know, often you might play, say, c1 to b2. Um, trying to get a checker up here or whatever, and, and just really trying to support this side and launching into the c5 square. Um, but black is doing okay in terms of getting his own counterplay on f4, so I think it's thought that uh, that black's probably fine there. I mean, all checkers is drawn anyway. Um, <clears throat> but, um, so, you know, that's, that's just... A, short sampling. Uh, of course, I have my own ideas and prep and all that, too, but um, my opponent plays b6 to a5. Uh, this is just inviting me to transpose back into the kind of the main line, so I go ahead and do that here. Uh, and my opponent plays f6 to e5. This is a bit of a sideline. Um, the main move here is f6 to g5, trying to get counterplay on the f4 square. Um, <clears throat> simply that way. And then, uh, you know, white, if white doesn't want to allow that counterplay, white can just jump in or just kind of move in and try to block black from playing that. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, usually black plans here will involve something like trying to trade off or challenge a strong c5 point, so maybe like here. Um, and the, di the disadvantage for black is that after it takes, takes, maybe say takes this way, he has kind of weakened his back rank, and that may eventually, in the end game, allow white a path forward. Um, but kind of the the good thing for black here is that uh, white is still a long way from actually being able to penetrate these points. So that is going to hopefully for black give black the chance to trade off and figure out how to adapt and defend, knowing that this point is going to have to be covered later in the game. So uh, I played takes. <clears throat> uh, black plays uh, here, um, and I play b2 to c3. I think that's kind of the main move. Uh, my opponent played c7 to b6. Uh, you know, this is this is fine. Uh, a couple things to note. There is a, a cute little line 
uh, here, here, and then this. And the point is when white takes, and black is going to have the double jump. So white takes, black uh, plays takes, takes, so that's the double jump. Um, and <clears throat> black gets a lot of development in this line. Um, just kind of the downside for black is that he's now majorly weakened this uh, back point here. So white would just continue a1 to b2, probably uh, then, you know, coming in and then coming in further and hopefully kind of bringing this guy into the fray. And then slowly white's going to try to use this guy and this guy here to try to march on in uh, to the b8 square. Um, <clears throat> That being said, I mean, you could do a lot of analysis on this position, in my opinion, is black's fine if he knows what he's doing, but it's pretty easy to screw up. So, uh, um, so my opponent instead went c7 to b6. Of course, the, the, other, uh, the other potential move here, c7 to d6, this is certainly an interesting try, and there's, an, there's kind of a cute trap that you have to know here. d3 to b4 takes takes right so white is really trying to establish this outpost on c5 and the question is okay well can black be sneaky come in and attack the white pawn from behind because remember these pawns jump backwards um but there's a, a very cute little refutation to this which is here and the point is if black does take and jump backwards then white has takes takes it's a double jump and white has won a checker um, but of course, uh, and then of course, if you do the other way like this, uh, white has this choice. He can play takes, takes this way, or he can go takes, takes this way. So like that, um, and, and white has one material. So, um, <clears throat> you know, these are kind of like, you know, it's a bit tricky, uh, here C7 to D6. Of course it's playable though, because here, here takes, um, and then you don't play this, which is a blunder. Instead, you got to find some other move. Um, you know, if black plays something else, you know, you, you probably ought to be okay. Um, yeah, maybe g7 to f6 uh, would be reasonable there. Uh, and, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I think white probably is going to get maybe a slight advantage. Uh, in this line, um, but there's a, you know there's a lot of game left. Black at least is very solid, um, and you know white white's achieved uh, this one objective at least of getting a strong c5 point, but has to kind of come up with what well what's the next idea going to be, um, and yeah you know I think. It's pretty easy to kind of go wrong for white. Like, I think if you play here, takes, takes, uh, I think this, like, after this, this probably just gives white not very much. Like, this probably gets white nothing um, because so many pieces are going to come off the board. And uh, if if a lot of pieces come off the board and the white pawn here, say, is kind of drawn out of the structure, then the c5 point could end up just being a weakness. Black will go d8 to c7 and to b6, and it's just going to attack it. So, um, so white does need to be really careful uh, after this, um, you know, like probably a better move, maybe c1 to b2 or something, uh, <clears throat> trying to just keep up this side of the structure, and eventually maybe white's going to play e3 to f4 and just try to exert pressure on black this way and pressure on black this way uh, and just try to increase the pressure. So, <clears throat> you know, there, that's kind of a lot of opening theory. Uh, my opponent played c7 to b6. I, I don't know that I've actually ever seen this move before. Um, <clears throat> I definitely thought like after this I was uh, out of book, um, so to speak. One nice thing about this game is usually you're out of book by like move five or six. There's always something playable that'll get you out of book around move five or six. Um, here, but of course black's threatening this double jump, so I play a1 to b2. Um, I did this pretty automatically. I, I didn't spend a lot of time here. Uh, my opponent told me after the game that um, one computer he plays with likes this move. Uh, and then takes, takes uh, is the line. Um, 
in uh, my my thought on this I, I feel a little bit weird uh playing with a checker on b1 or on a1 when i could keep the guys a little bit more centralized um and i think my opponent said against the computer he'd been playing here here and then this uh and yeah, my thought on this is that I, I don't really see any big source of advantage for white here uh, because, all right, white's lost a guy on c1, which is a fairly central checker, usually pretty key to supporting different structures, and black's lost a checker on f8, uh, <clears throat> which is, you know, also a pretty good checker in terms of supporting other structures. And, and you know, black has some advanced pieces that kind of occupy the board, um, I don't really see anything for white here. So not, not a big fan of that approach with c1 to b2, but I didn't really think about it in the game. Uh, a1 to b2 was just very natural. I have to stop the double jump, and I come towards the center, so I played it. Uh, black jumped. Now I jump, and uh, here I, I think my opponent made a little bit of a mistake. Comes out b8 to c7. In, in in my mind, there's no reason to weaken the back rank like this. Um, we've we've already seen a lot of kind of attrition on this side of the board, and the way that this game is played, the way that checkers in general is played, is that you're trying to spot the weaknesses along the back rank and form a pattern to get there. And when I saw this, I immediately saw this idea. I'm going to get this. Um, you know, one of these checkers, like maybe the one on F2, I'm going to get it all the way up to D4. I'm going to take this checker, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to make a battering ram. Because you notice how weak this B6 square is. And it's a little bit hard, you know, I don't have anything good to animate with. But if you imagine, you know, okay, a white pawn on D4, a white pawn on E3, then I can go C5 to B6 like this. And I'm just, after black takes, I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to jump in. And then I'm going to creep into the back rank, and this is going to like this is going to be really, really problematic. Um, <clears throat> if you get a king in this game, the kings are so powerful that it's kind of over in in a lot of positions. So uh, I I didn't see any reason to jump off the back rank. I thought all right, black's probably going to have a much more like rational game. So g7 to f6, of course, is a move. <clears throat> Just kind of coming up, getting this guy out of the corner. You want to you wanna get your guy here out of the corner usually, like white wants to play a1 to b2, black wants to play this, because the guy in the corner only controls one square, so he needs to kind of come up and get into the game. But these other guys on the back rank are usually pretty well, I they're, they're kind of like um, the goalies, you know, they're there, uh, they control a lot of entry points and squares, and, you know, they're, they're goalies to get in. Um... Now, what about this guy? Like, why am I not... He only controls one square as well. He only controls C7. Why am I so bent out of shape about this guy, but I'm not bent out of shape about this guy? Well, when this guy goes, there's a direct route in with B6, A7, B8. Like, the A7 square, like, white just has a way... You know, he'll just come up, slowly come up the board, trade off pieces, and he'll come in B6, A7, B8. And there's no equivalent path here right because uh the the checkers board is asymmetrical there's a big weakness b8 a7 but h8 there's only one way to get there which is through the g7 square which is usually very well guarded and it's kind of hard to get there so <clears throat> that's why it's a good idea to get this h8 checker off the back rank but the b8 checker you eh, usually don't want to do that uh if you can help it um, so g7 to f6, of course, would be totally playable. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I think the other like really critical question is, does black equalize if he just plays here? And I'm not sure that it's exactly equality, because after takes, so black would take back this way. Note, if you, if you take back this way, <clears throat> I mean, it, it might be playable, but, you know, I'd want to know what the computer says. But usually it's not a good idea to have these guys all jammed up like this because now it's like, how will this G7 checker develop into the game? And if the G7 checker can't come out, then the H8 checker can't come out. So my natural reaction is I'm thinking like, okay, how can I block up all of these checkers so that the H8 checker never comes into the game? 
and um like the thing that just kind of immediately comes to mind is okay what about like uh what about just like d2 to e3 uh with the idea of you know black might play this okay i can't quite play e3 to d4 like this because black plays the sacrifice white has to take and then black comes through and makes a king so we can't quite do that um but maybe we can maybe we can go ahead and play b b2 to a3 or something first and you know the idea being okay maybe maybe black comes up this way and maybe there's a way for us with white to jam the works uh you know this this one uh maybe maybe a little premature actually because you know maybe i'm maybe i'm just not making any progress the guys are all getting traded off um you know another approach if i can't quite figure out a way to jam it on the d4 square uh another approach would be to try to jam it on the f4 square so like this one would immediately threaten this double jump and black has to play e7 to d6 to guard because if you go this way that's going to run into takes, takes, and f6 to g5. And the point of this kind of tactical motif is that after takes, then white has this double jump like that, like takes, takes. So white, white actually wins a pawn there. Um, so <clears throat> that's just an important tactical motif. Um, so yeah, yeah. So e3 to f4, putting pressure on this guy, and black probably has to defend this way. Okay, and, and now we're maybe making some progress towards jamming up this side. Um, you know, maybe just like F3 to E4 like this. <clears throat> and it seems like this side is getting jammed. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, like, okay, uh, let's say black plays F6 to G5, trying to gain space, come into H4. Now white... Uh, the question is, can white play G3 to h4 and i'm not so sure i'm not so sure that he can g3 to h4 if black were forced to play g7 to f6 uh then that would be great because we'd really you know the whole side like this h pawn is only coming up to g7 and then it's out of moves but um okay we're gonna see this and then if here then black can just play kind of like a, any old waiting move like this force white to take now we have to see a double jump like this, and then white will play here and have to start taking back, you know, okay, so like here, now up here, black will play up like this, and yeah, I guess black's, black's probably doing okay here. We're going to see this, and then if here, then white's going to play here, uh, and mm, you know, maybe maybe white has like a tiny minuscule positional advantage where it's a little bit harder to play black just because this seems like this back rank here is a little bit weak. But of course, white's back rank is weak too. Um, you know, white's threatening to play e3 to d4, but black can play this probably. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. This is probably going to be a draw. Um, so what I say, all checkers is drawn. So. Um, yeah, just kind of like looking through this, uh, trying to think about strategies and, you know, uh, jamming, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so where, where are we in this? So we're looking at this move. My opponent played b8 to c7, and, and I don't like how it weakens the back rank, and I'm thinking that e7 to d6 is probably a better way to do it. So after takes... Uh, yeah, my thought had been f f8 takes d7 looks more natural. I was thinking maybe d8 to f6 is going to lead to a jam on this side. I actually, maybe I don't see it. Um, maybe a, maybe a stronger player would know how to jam this side. Maybe there's something there. Or or maybe d8 to f6 is just fine. Um, yeah, all right, I was looking at d2 to e3 and some stuff like that. I don't know, maybe, maybe white's best, maybe the best white can do is play takes, takes, and takes, and just have a little better control over the center because you know he controls the e5 square he's going to play c3 to d4 b 
b2 to c3, uh, one of his checkers will come into e3, and yeah, white will establish some control over the center. Maybe if he gets checkers on c3 and d4, maybe he can go f4 into e5. Um, you know, the e5 point, maybe white seems to control it pretty well, so it makes sense maybe to try to take it. Um, yeah, maybe that's the best that white can do. Um, and, and that looks like a kind of like a plus equals situation. e7 to d6 takes, so I think f8 takes d6 is like the most natural move. Um, and here looking at this, um, you know, probably the natural response is going to be g3 to f4 takes, maybe take towards the center. Uh, and, you know, I like white just maybe a little bit better here. Um, the idea being white with the pawn on f4 has control over e5, and black doesn't quite have comparable center, center control in this position. Um, maybe he can try to achieve it himself, like he could play here to try to get at the e5 square. But I do feel like a lot of good goalie pieces are coming off the back rank to achieve that. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be thrilled about that with black if, if that's how I had to fight for the center. Um, and, yeah, so, uh, so, you know, it's definitely, to some extent, you know, if, you, if you're faced with this position and white's established as checker on c5, white has the outpost, black doesn't have the outpost, black has not established the outpost, um, it's, it's a passive game, right? Uh, and you're playing defense. And if you play a move like e7 to d6, you know, you know, you you know that you're playing defense, uh, because, you know, here white has a little better control over the center. And if you want to fight for it, you're going to have to take guys off the back rank probably. Um, so it's, you know, it's defense for black, but is it holdable? Yeah, it's probably hold holdable and it's probably not that hard. Um, you know, black's probably going to hold Black's probably going to draw this like at least four four out of ten games or something. Or sorry, I mean like black black's going to black's going to have a score of four points out of ten games. Like black's going to score forty percent from here probably at least. Um, <clears throat> like you know that that would be my thought. Uh, so. Um. But my opponent played b8 to c7, and, and we'll see why this is maybe a little bit of a weakness. But that being said, uh, you know, here here I did uh, come up with a very interesting idea. And, uh, and I, you know, I did it. I did it because I wanted to try to create imbalances in the position. I was playing for a win. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that I'm stronger than my opponent. Uh, and... So I want to create the imbalances to give me a shot at playing for a win. And, um, you know, if you look at strategies for white, right, I've kind of maxed out this side. There's not much more progress that I can make on this side. Um, and, like, most of the progress that I could make, is, it's not going to be very good progress, right? So like if I if I play b2 to a3 with the idea of them playing c3 to b4, um, I mean I think I'm just immediately causing problems for myself because black will play here and target this guy and I I don't know how I save this guy, um, you know black is threatening this double jump. I mean may you know maybe I can like pull this together but I'm just creating more problems for myself <laughs> because here here you know black. Fills it in again. What do I have to do? Well, I guess I have to come up. Um, you know, and, I, and but I don't see that I've actually made any progress with this, right? Because, uh, you know, among other things, um, you know, black could just play like here. So now white finally plays this double jump, and then here, like checkers are even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus one, two, three, four. Yeah, seven on seven. And, and I don't really feel like White made a lot of progress. In fact, White kind of decimated his own back rank. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm, I'm like, uh, 
you know, you, you can agree I'm kind of out of things to do on this side. So I have to play on this side of the board or play in the center. Um, playing in the center, though, uh, there's like an immediate concrete problem. Like there's a, maybe a set of tactical problems. <clears throat> so if I play here, um, then, you know, I have to worry always about like uh, this kind of stuff. So there, there. And then the question is, yeah, so like here, yeah, I saw, I actually saw this line in, in the game. Now black will play this checker and play one, two, three, four jumps. So like, boom. Uh, and so that's completely lost for white. Yeah, so like F3 to E4, or F2 to E3, I actually saw this in the game and I ruled it out uh because i saw this uh this big jump but i you know i wasn't thrilled about it anyway <clears throat> and for some context this was game in 20. Uh, each side had 20 moves or 20 minutes and and i spent like seven minutes on this move um should i have done that probably not um i think it was too much time as you'll see but um the reason that i had to do that like my candidate moves, okay, B2 to A3, I ruled out pretty quickly. Is like, I'm not going to make any progress on that side. Um, playing in the center with F2 to E3, that was something that I looked at for a minute, and I felt that I was creating weaknesses, and I, you know, this is a pretty big tactical motif. So I wanted to just look, and then after I looked at it for a while, I saw like, okay, there, there's this huge jump. So I ruled that out. Um, I also wanted to know, can I play in the center this way? <clears throat> and um, I, I actually don't remember what my conclusion here was, except that it it didn't seem like, um, you know, ultimately if I'm playing for the battering ram where I'm trying to get into B6 and A7, it, it didn't make sense to me to be taking pieces away from the... Um, kind of like nice holding fort over here. I want to use these guys that I have over here on the right side of the board to force through to the left side of the board. I don't want to be taking them away. And I also knew like, okay, there's going to be, there's going to be garbage I have to calculate. So like here, here, and then looking at this. So like here, here, and then boom, 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 boom. So then this, this is probably even checkers, right? So I have four checkers here, three checkers there. So seven checkers and then three checkers, yeah. So, but this looks like a pretty drawish end game. Um, you know, white's a little bit better uh, positioned, but um, seemed like black can draw that. So, yeah, I mean, I, D2 to E3 didn't look right. And I knew that this looked kind of junky. Like I was going to have to calculate that and I wasn't happy. Um, but of course, like the golden boy candidate move here and, you know, the move that I thought probably objectively is strongest would be G3 to F4. Um, this move, like just taking control of the center, it just seems so natural and logical. Um, and I, uh, and I thought here that black would play this, this, and this to try to just get a little bit of control of the center back. Uh, and I looked at this and I thought like, okay, this is probably like plus over equals. This is probably this is probably a good position for red. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the computer backs me up on that. <clears throat> but I also felt uh, that my opponent had experience in these positions, just trading off the pieces and making a draw. And uh, I know he was training with uh, Aurora, the computer, um in these kinds of positions, trying to, like, I, I knew he was, you know, uh, if he was playing this line as black and he came prepared to play this line, then he must be, like, taking off pieces and making a draw. Uh, and I got the feeling that my opponent was still playing book moves. I mean, he was playing these all very fast. So I wanted to find something that was safe that would take him, for me, take him out of book um, and allow me to just play my game. And... G3 to H4, um, <clears throat> so on the plus side, right? On the plus side, one thing I like about the move is that it controls the G5 square. And 
Uh, it prevents black from just immediately seizing space. Um, so, you know, this, of course, is going to hang uh, to that double jump. Um, but uh, coming up this way as well, just at this point, this started to look like very, very risky for black because, um, you know, white is going to have ways to try to attack this checker from behind. So I like that aspect of it, uh, that, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of have a way to indirectly cover the F4 square. Uh, of course, you know, black can, black doesn't have to lose a checker because after here we have to see takes and takes. Um, but this does seem to weaken the back rank a lot. Like I'm going to play pawn to A3. You see this, takes uh, here, and, you know, I'll just let this pawn hang. I'll probably come up like this uh, here. Well, and, and yeah, I, actually, I have to calculate um, and see where we are. I uh, Instead of e, e3 to d4, I can actually play this, this, and this. So maybe, yeah, maybe that actually looks, I'm just going to retake on c5 and win a pawn. So, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I liked... I like that aspect of the move that I'm indirectly covering up for. Of course, the, the like the long-term strategic downside is that I'm, of course, just weakening the F4 square. You know, white is always playing for C5. Black is always playing for F4. If I take this guy away, uh, long-term, black should be looking at ways to get his own pawn into F4. Um, so that's going to be problematic. Uh, black played g7 to f6 here uh and yeah i mean there's just there's a lot of moves for black uh there's a lot of choices so uh you know that's kind of natural um yeah you know it's a natural move but of course when black does play this then i get the chance to come in and play f2 to e3 because um you know and, and this is a move, you know, like I can't normally play this move, right? Because as, you know, of this, right? With the idea of takes and then black having some way to sack and crash through and take a bunch of stuff. But here, since black has played g7 to f6, now I have double jumps and I just win a checker. So uh, you remember my like long-term strategy is they want to penetrate on b6. And when black plays g7 to f6, this is, and this was one of the reasons that I liked the move that I played with g3 to h4. It's almost like a waiting move, and I'm waiting for black to play this move. And when black plays it, now I'm going to play f2 to e3, and the idea is that I will get to come in on d4 with impunity. In the long term, I can bring a guy from g1 or e3 into, or e1 into e3, back it up, and I'll get my battering ram and I'll get to break it down on b6. So this, to me, this was just a gift uh, when I saw the move g7 to f6. So what, <clears throat> what did I think was like a more rational approach for black? Well, the c5 pawn, this is still like the big issue in the position. So if black had gone in for trade, trade, and then maybe just here, uh, there's still some of the same issues that we saw before <clears throat> with... Um, you know, black uh, maybe achieving some equality here, uh, and uh, that you know, it's hard hard to prove an advantage for white uh, in terms of like, okay, you know, where did I think my advantage might come from? Um, <clears throat> I thought that there were maybe you know, there's some possibilities. Like maybe I'm gonna play here, and I've got this guy on h4. If I can't successfully construct the battering ram to get into the b6 square, which it looks like I've lost all these checkers, so I'm probably not going to, I at least have the idea of eventually trying to get a guy to g5. And play d2 to e3, bring this e1 to d2, uh, and then at the right moment, and i got to be careful about how I do it because the pawn can often hang, but maybe at the right moment I'll be able to get h4 to g5 in. And that'll maybe get me a guy in where I can try to take advantage of the weakness on f8, which is the back rank, right? Um, so 
That's another like advantage of the move g3 to h4 is that I'm anticipating that this the black is going to play this e7 to d6 and relieve the pressure. And then I'm going to get into the f8 square eventually. Eventually. I say eventually. Um, <clears throat> but it actually happens in this game. So g3 to h4, I, I don't think it's a brilliant move or anything. And I'm sure, like, objectively that this isn't best. Like, g3 to f4 probably is, like, objectively plus over equals. But uh, Jackers is objectively also drawn anyway. So g3 to h4... Uh, was my idea, and um, I'm anticipating the f8 is going to open up at some point. So uh, g7 to f6, so this is a gift. I walk in with f2 to e3, and <laughs> black plays h7 to g7, and he, this is an, it's a natural move, right? You want to get this checker off the square. Here it happens to be just an incredible blunder, um, and I... But, you know, I'd already sunk seven minutes into kind of formulating my grand game plan. And when I looked at this, I just said, well, I'm going to play this quickly. And I spent like less than 30 seconds on this. And I just play e3 to d4, which is great. Like, this is still a very nice position for me, and I'm very happy. But uh, it was too much time to spend. Or, sorry, it was not enough time to spend because... Um, because after h7 to g7, um, I actually have a shot, and I just missed it, which is takes, takes. And the, and the reason I think I just missed it, one, I wasn't looking for a shot, and then two, uh, it involves d2, f4, d6, b8, which is actually like a really weird shot. Like this pattern, this exact pattern doesn't come up much, but this, of course, is, is just winning now. Um, so yeah, totally... Totally just blanked and missed it. Um, so h7 to g7, but I just continued on with my plan. And this is, but this is still like a clear edge for white, right? Because I'm going to have my easy plan. I get the battering ram to come into b6. And all these guys are like facing the pressure head on of all my guys. Uh, and this advanced pawn on c5 is going to give me good play. So black has to find a way to get a pawn to f4 just to get counterplay here. Um, c7 to b6, uh, I mean, you know, prob I guess what, what else are you going to do, but, um, you know, I, all right, I'm coming up and I'm getting ready. I'm just going to start coming in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I guess with c7 to b6, Black's trying to block the battering ram with, uh, me coming in. But now I'm going to really try my luck at getting a squeeze out here uh, where black will get in Zugzwang because I have so much extra space. Uh, black plays h6 to g5, so correctly sensing uh, you know, that black has to come up and make progress on this side, although my opponent was uh, timid about trying to get a checker into f4. Um, <clears throat> so I played... Uh, f2 to e3 here uh, because I wanted to try to take th some control of the f4 square and prevent g5 coming into f4. Um, yeah, so one, one question for me, I guess, is, you know, could I, could I play it out this way or should I play it out this way? Um, but I kind of shied away from this because black is going to play this now, threatening this double jump, and then I have to come up here. And I've come up, like, pretty far off the back rank. Um, so that was my reason reason for rejecting it. Um, I don't know, though, that it was objectively a good reason uh, because I think this is actually very hard for black to play now because if you play here, then there's takes takes and then this is the winning shot right because here um well among other things white can like takes and takes and takes this way <laughs> uh but there's there's also uh you know this double jump this way and of course the uh other double jump as well uh coming back uh taking this guy so 
d2 to e3 uh yeah if if this maybe this is winning um d2 to e3 yeah i mean black would have to find something else uh so possible line might be sack sack and here trying to get something and then you know i wonder about here here uh this 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 uh, and then looks like white comes out on top because here here and then here um this looks like uh this looks like a big pain uh for black i'm threatening to take this way um we'll try one last thing which is g5 here trying to like break this up right so if white takes this way then we have takes and takes down here that could create some problems so that's not not so simple but after f6 to g5 i wonder what about takes this way um and then takes this way right and then white will have takes and takes well and then black has takes and takes down here um and black actually wins wow yeah so that's uh that's disheartening for white yeah so <clears throat> yeah ultimately i ended up playing f2 to e3 um d2 to e3 uh yeah maybe maybe my intuition about here uh was correct um and that after the uh c1 to d2 uh yeah maybe uh may, yeah maybe that's a correct intuition that black has some counterplay um uh, in this position because i've weakened up uh this back rank so much um <clears throat> it can be pretty hard at this phase of the game to make judgments uh but yeah f f2 to e3 it was um and black came up with um uh, g7 to h6 um and here uh, yeah here i decided to uh break the tension probably wisely i tried to i broke up the tension a little bit with e3 to f4 uh, it's interesting to note that maybe black doesn't have to allow me to play this way. So after f2 to e3, it might be possible to play this here and here. Um, so that that is a way to go, which it takes, takes. Uh, and then, you know, I come up here and then black plays there, there, and then this. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, this actually looks pretty uncomfortable for white, right? Because looks to me like the only move that doesn't hang a bunch of stuff uh, to different double jumps would be this, and then black plays here. Um, and it, it seems like black is doing okay. Of course, looks can be a bit deceptive, right? In a kind of a tricky position like this, you got to be precise. So a3 to b4. And maybe this is just going to be a squeeze out. Um, up here. Then up. Then this. Yeah, okay. And it looks like Black's just totally out of moves and has to self-destruct. Uh, and, you know, give up. Give up something. Uh, like here would be a try. The idea of if White takes back this way, then maybe Black gets a double jump in this way. But... Uh, just this here here yeah and uh yeah this is a squeeze out black has to keep on sacrificing we're gonna get takes and takes and now black plays um takes and takes this way white has to jump back black yeah and and black's lost here but white would just play this and then grab this guy on c3 so black's toast so yeah, F2 to E3, I think maybe I'm doing some good jobs navigating uh, kind of a tense position. And then G7 to H6 maybe is best. So maybe maybe G5 to F4. I saw this idea in the game, and I thought I got about as far as takes here. 
Uh, and then, you know, realizing that I have to play B2 to A3 and the black takes. And, yeah, I mean, my kind of my thought in my mind was like, okay, well, you know, black has counterplay, but uh, it didn't seem like white's position is going to be worse than black's position uh, because, you know, I have a guy on C5, black has a guy on F4. And looking at it, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a squeeze out. Um, maybe on A3 to B4, I wonder, maybe this. Uh, would be maybe this is a try. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well. So here, the idea is. So if takes this way, the black has takes and takes, and white has to take this, and then black has takes and takes, takes and takes. Ah, uh, so that's no good. So f6 to g5. Um. Uh, yeah, not that. So maybe I have to play here. And then what if takes? Then white plays a double jump. Black plays a double jump. White plays a double jump. And then black, ooh, and black wins that. Ooh, that is, that is a good shot. That is a good shot. So, hmm. Yeah, so H, H6 takes G4. Maybe A3 to B4 isn't possible. Maybe I have to be a little bit more precise. But it's kind of like, what else, right? What else? Because if C1 to B2, then black has here, here. Oh, okay, that's a double jump. And then there's going to be the double jump in this way. And then white makes his own king here. So he might pick off this pawn. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, this might be like a slight advantage to white there. Takes, takes, C1 to B2, so A3 to, A5 to B4, takes, and then, yeah, the other choice would be to take this way, um, and, you know, that's, that's crazy too, and, you know, we're back into figuring out, well, is this a squeeze out or not, um, and, uh, I tend to think it probably is after here, here, and then here, looks like a squeeze out. So, yeah. So, all right. So, that's, um, yeah, I, you know, I knew it was going to be tough. I unfortunately didn't have the time to calculate everything. Um, yeah, F2 to E3. Yeah, maybe maybe there's resources here with uh, G5 to F4 takes here, 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 this, here. Yeah, takes and then yeah, you know maybe and maybe there's resources because because this a three to b five move or a three to b four move uh, isn't playable because of this uh, incredible incredible shot. So yeah, um, but what my opponent played which was g seven h six this this kind of allowed me to simplify a bit and I was pretty low on time here. Um, but it, it's actually like my simplifying move is pretty useful. I play e3 to f4, and so I take a lot of pressure off of my position, and I remove any idea that black has of coming into the f4 point. So takes, and then I, um, yeah, but this is kind of a critical moment, right? So <clears throat> um, the, the like logical move, and in my mind, <clears throat> and the move that I'd intended to play was uh, h4, uh, takes f2, and uh, the idea here is just white stays very flexible uh, and can come up again and try to reclaim f4, so f2, e3, f4. So I'm going to keep trying to claim the f4 point, um, and yeah, I, I like this position. I thought uh, it was very flexible, um, and I've really done a great job keeping these guys at bay. Like These guys are all locked up on this side. Uh, and, you know, I think if black wants to, like, stay in this game, he's going to have to play this, but then after takes and takes, now I've, like, really weakened this back rank. There's a lot of weaknesses here, and, um, you know, my, my hope was I'll just start kind of advancing my guys up the board, uh, takes, you know, trade off a few pieces or whatever, and if I leave the guys on C1 and G1, then I'm pretty well covered on the back rank, but black has holes everywhere 
So there's a very good chance of me getting a runner and getting a guy in to promote. So, uh, so I yeah I, I liked the the move H four or and H four takes F two, um and and then I like I don't want to say saw a ghost, um but when I looked at uh, here right. So of course I saw this, and, and my assumption in my mind was, oh yeah, and I'll, and I'll take here, and yeah, my my thought is this looks really hideous. I have a big position full of holes here. Black will just play something like this, and then I have to take, and then there's a double jump and go back, and this and this, uh, and I don't know, like maybe having the pawn on e5 is like some big advantage here. Uh, because I am threatening to come into f6, so, you know, black probably, well, I don't know, black would play here, and then this, and then even just a move like this, this, and this, like, this takes off most of the pressure, and this is probably drawn. Um, so I did not have any, uh, in my kind of evaluation, I didn't have any love for, here, the move d2 takes f4, uh, and, I, and I had no love for, um uh, the the idea of um playing the move that I did, which was h two takes up four, but then, like I just did like a last sort of blunder check um just because my opponent looked uncomfortable with the position, I just did a last kind of look, and then so what's interesting is rather than ending up playing h h four takes up two, which I think is like just good positionally. Uh, I ended up going for this line because I saw that after takes, uh, I just had like a moment of revelation where I said, ah, I take this. And that opens the way for this path to come in to H8, right? So B6 takes D4, and I'm like, ah, I have the double jump. And I ended my analysis here, and, and because sometimes when you see like a good move, uh, you just instinctively just like, okay, now, and you play it. and if we didn't have that tendency as humans, there would not be the proverb, when you see a good move, sit on your hands and look for a better one. Um, and I totally didn't look for a better one here because I ended my analysis at this position. I have a double jump and I'm getting ready to make a king. How much better can, like, what else do I need? I will say that I'm better at regulating my emotions than I did Um when I was a teenager playing chess, because, um, you know, I just saw the good move and I executed it, but my heart wasn't racing or anything. I didn't have like the anticipation of victory or anything that would interfere with my cognitive judgment. Um, but I did just automatically execute on what I thought was uh, very likely a winning move. Um, well, because... Uh, uh, I didn't see any point in trying to spend any more time on this. You know, like I thought, well, I'm I'm not going to come up with anything that's better. And I also had in the back of my mind, even if this isn't winning here, like the worst I'm going to do is draw. Uh, because, yeah, uh, it's such a this is such a big blow for Black. Uh, and, of course, my opponent instantly played this. Um which, of course, I have to take, and then black takes this way, and this guy on f6 is trapped. So all of the dreams were shattered. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this is also just a, this is a, like a very interesting point in the game as well, because I thought about it for a minute, and what I ended up playing, I, I, I played f6 to g7 with the idea of just takes, and when I played the move, my thought was, okay, well, we've now, like, I've lost all my positional advantages because I pushed so far forward. Uh, like, I don't have an outpost on c5. I don't have anything. The only thing that I have going for me is that my guys are a little bit more in the center and these guys are a little bit off on the side. And I said, you know what? I'm going to keep the maximum pieces on that I can, and I'm just going to play this end game, and I'm just going to play it, and I'm going to play it for a win. Um, and I'm just going to keep playing because, you know, I need to win. Um, and so I went here out of the conviction that if I just bring these guys back, then I'm causing Black to be further from playing any plan where, where he'll get
get a guy to f4 and start trading off. Uh, so I wanted to keep the tension alive. Um, <clears throat> the other plan, right? So f2 to e3, and then takes this way, uh, and then come up this way, and then here and here. So the this is like the other position I had to compare it to. And the thought in my mind was that this was probably going to be objectively drawn. So black would, you know, black plays here, right? And, and the idea is always to meet this with just this, taking off these guys. Um, but, you know, I mean, I guess in these positions, you know, quarry whether white can play this here. And then I, yeah, I mean, I guess this is just runs into here, here, here. And well, white does have the uh, opposition. These, like, this is an, you know, this is going to be drawn because black will be able to sacrifice one checker to get through. Uh, so, for instance, you know, here, here, um, you know, this, 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 uh, this, for instance. Um, uh, and, you know, and, and the, the trick, right, is you don't want to run into this here where you're, the opposition kills you and, and you run out of checker moves. Um, but okay, yeah, black can just play here, then this, um, and then move a guy in, white moves in, black plays here, 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 um, and then, you know, all right, so king this way to be able to jump back. Uh, looks looks like black can just play here, takes here, and and looks like this is going to, yeah, this is going to be a draw. Because here, this, white plays this, right, setting up the idea of maybe doing a jump or whatever, but black plays here. And, and this end game is drawn. So... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I felt that the f2 to e3 and then takes here, here, here. I felt this was drawish. Um, but I know that the computer, like, just thought this move was drawn, but, like, thought that I had another idea here. So I'm just curious. I want to just put the computer on and see what it was. Like, okay, yeah, it's giving me up a checker here. Um, all right. Oh, a checker and a half. So let's see what, let's see what the idea was. Uh, f2 to g3, right, and then takes. And now it says g3 to h4. All right, so this, like, I got I got this far on this line. This is as far as I went because, it, yeah, like, I don't see the idea. Oh, all right, here's, here's the idea. Wow, h3 to g5, targeting this guy. Come back, and then, yeah, uh, g7 to f6. Okay, now I'm starting to see why this is good. There's, like, a clear... This guy is just dominating these two checkers. Um, all right, so I like here, what about this? We come up. Okay, now it's, oh, all right. So see this, this, and then there's a double jump. So, okay. Okay, so not that. Um, so, all right, so we have to play G3 to H2, okay. All right, it's playing c1 to b2. Okay, mate in 30 with c1 to b2. Interesting. So here, this, b2 to a3. Yeah, black's, this is a squeeze out. Black's running out of moves. Here, oh yeah, and okay, and then black, yeah, black's out of moves and, and then has to allow white to king. So that's going to be a win. Yeah, okay, that's that's brutal. F2 to G3 takes and then here. Yeah, I uh I totally didn't look at I totally didn't look at this. Um boom. And then yeah, this this position's probably yeah, this is probably winning for white because this one checker ties up two checkers and this checker defends against this checker. So White is basically playing with three against two checkers, uh, and these two checkers are not super well placed on e7b6. Okay, all right, all right, that is, yeah, that's fascinating to know. 
Uh, I wonder why I didn't. Well, yeah, I can tell you why. It's because I truncated the line. Um, I truncated the line uh, after here, here, here. Uh, that, yeah, I just truncated it because I did not see how I was possibly going to win. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a fallacy because even if I didn't see this move, I guess I should have seen at least this move to block this checker and then have this guy come in. Yeah, and this, it, this it turns out, is also apparently winning for me. So this, um, yeah, yeah, so, yep, and that's, yep, totally winning. Okay, so, yeah, so that's, that's just something I missed, totally missed that win. Um, but yeah, I played, I played F, F6 to G7, and my idea was, okay, I'm just gonna play the same game. And, and this is objectively drawn, but, you know, he's gonna try to make something out of it. Um. So black logically like tries to activate these guys, comes up a little bit. I mean that makes sense. Uh, I come into f4. So this is where I want to set up my checkers. I'm playing for control of the e5 square and the g5 square. Uh, so I'm trying to get a little bit of control over the center. And my long-term plan is play d2 to e3 and then I'll play c3 to d4 at some point. So I'm going to just try to bring all these checkers up that side of the board. Um, e7 to f6 makes sense, fend off against this guy, d2 to e3 makes sense, f8 to g7, um, yeah, I mean, it's always going to be a little bit of a debacle where to put this guy, do you put him over here, or are you going to sideline him, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it can be hard to know, f2 to g3, doesn't make sense to spend too much time on those moves, though, because the critical place to spend your time this is the critical place to sp start spending time, right? <clears throat> because uh, black played c7 to d6. It, I, I guess it turned out that uh, I guess it turned out this was fine. Um, and yeah, th this this turned out fine because um, after takes here c1 to d2. So black black actually this was now like the losing move of the game. Black played d6 to c5. And the reason this is losing, right, is I told you I wanted to break through on the g5 square at some point, and I finally do. Play g3 to h4, and there's no way now to stop me from playing uh f f4 to g5, and then after takes, I'm gonna take back with a double jump. Uh black tried, I mean black played here, c7 to d6, and the idea was here takes and then I played the double jump and now black was able to take back but this is a forced loss uh, for black it's a pretty easy forced loss right because white has the opposition white takes the opposition with d2 to c3 um and white also has the opposition with h4 and f8 right so you have the opposition and the black pawns are too far away to support each other so black played here I came in here and here so this now forces black to sacrifice a checker, like because he's out of moves. He plays this, this, and here. Uh, and I have to be careful, right? Because if I just run the checker, then after this promotes here, like I, I actually am not in time to come back and stop this. Um, so if one player promotes and the other player gets a pawn to the third rank, usually it's pretty hard to stop the promotion. Um, but uh, But of course, um, you know, in this position, uh, here, I don't have to allow black to come in. I just sacrifice this guy. I force him to go backwards. And then here, here, and then here, black resigned because, um, after pawn comes up, then I just tempo and then black's forced to get, black gives up the checker. So white controls this diagonal. Um, so, okay. So, uh, so this this all went horribly wrong for black, but it went wrong because uh, when I played c1 to d2, the idea was to force into the g5 square with g3 to h4 and then play play this. Um, but instead of this, black has to play here with the idea of after this. Now, since I'm threatening to play this, black. 
Black can play here. And so Black hasn't removed the d6 support, so Black can save this uh, position. Um, white comes up here, here, right, because I want to promote. And I, I saw about this far, and I saw that after this, I'm like, well, okay, you know, uh, I'm my guy's going to get through first, so, uh, you know, I'm going to be fine. Um, you know, and, and, and I felt good about this, like, okay, maybe I win, maybe I draw. Uh, but it turns out this is just a dead draw because black would play b6 to a5. And then after here, then I play this. So takes and takes. So I promote and then this. So, uh, yeah, that would, that would end up being a, a dead draw. Um, and if I play this way, trying to create a double jump, black has to step up this way. Um, and then white can still be tricky and play here with the idea of, you know, taking this guy, but, um, just here, white plays a move and then black can sacrifice this guy and then he comes in and, and he'll be able to make a draw. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so, so c1 to d2, uh, d6 to c5, just like underestimated my plan of coming in and trying to to play and break on the g5 square um so that's yeah so here so it turns out that uh the move black played with this is fine but of course there were some other good candidate moves or like interesting candidate moves to look at uh that i wondered about so c7 to b6 you have to take that pretty seriously uh, my plan was to play into e5 and if black plays out this way, then I play here, and I'm trapping this checker, right? Because here, I just jump back. So, uh, c7 to b6, when I play here, black has to allow me to take. So, um, this would be a natural move. So, takes, takes. So, I got about this far in the game. And my conclusion when I looked at this in the game is I kind of have a free hand with these two pawns against this one. And so, it's like a good pawn majority on the right side of the board, these two against the one guy, and they're very flexible, um, and, and I felt like I'm keeping these guys at bay with these guys, <clears throat> um, and I guess the way to make sense of this is, right, black is going to play b6 to c5 and trade off my kind of advanced piece, so maybe, maybe I would want to play this now, and um, black might come up, and, and then, you know, okay, Oh, I got. I got to be careful not that because here I guess, and I can't stop black from penetrating. So, uh, yeah, maybe I have to come up this way or something, or, uh, you know, or maybe maybe this is the move. Um, yeah, and and this actually like this feels very good, very comfortable for white. Uh, you know, probably here threatening to come into the d2 square. Um, white's probably going to play this. Black needs to find a way to get into to b2. So, all right, so you place here. Mm. Yeah, actually, yeah, looking at this, black, black seems to have activated his majority. He's doing fine. Because here, 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 now actually, uh, you know, so this, <laughs> and then promote, uh, and then if white plays here, then black, black's promoted first, so he gets the chance to play this, force takes, and then back. Oh, oh, okay, it's a force double jump, actually. So, uh, yeah, so that's actually winning. So I wonder... Uh, yeah, I wonder if I misevaluated anything. C5 to B4. Uh, takes, takes. Yeah, so like I felt this position was going to be good for white, but I wonder if I put on the computer. Yeah, okay, so so the computer is giving this position now as a draw, and it's just saying, yeah, you have to play here and just allow black to, to trade off. Uh, and this, this looks very like probably going to make a draw here. Um, so, yeah, so the question, the question is, 
here, you know, if we don't allow black to play this and we play this instead, okay, still giving it as drawn, b6 to c5. Um, oh, but it's, this is <laughs> this is not a clean draw. It's giving, it's giving with white. You just play here, here, <laughs> and then you run your guy. Uh, but this is not what white wants to do. Yeah, yeah, it's a, probably a draw, but all right, not good. So, yeah, so this... This position, it's a key position. Um, black played here, which is drawn, but I, yeah. So c7 to b6. Maybe this is uh, maybe this is a more interesting, or maybe a better way to make a draw because here, um, yeah, not not f6 to g5 like we talked about, but yeah, c5 to b4 takes takes. Yeah, it, lo it looks actually like uh, here, um, it's also saying that this way is drawn. Yeah, so maybe this is just one of these positions where, yeah, if black if black had played um, c7 to b6 instead of c7 to d6, maybe this establishes some counterplay for black and, it, and just like more, more reds lead to a draw. Um, of course, the other line that you won't have to look at is what about this? It's also giving this as a draw. Uh, I probably probably would have played here. Okay, and this is it's just having this transpose back into the other line. B3 to F4. Here, 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 and this is gonna gonna probably be drawn here. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, as it is, after C7 to D6, and I played takes takes in here. Um. Yeah, I think c7 to b6 to draw is like maybe an only move. Um, if yeah, it's hard. It's hard to suggest anything else. Well, I guess I guess here uh, would be the other try, and I would just come up, and black comes up, but then yeah, and then I have this, and I, and I've trapped this guy, trapped this guy, so. Yeah, so just a very tough game. Yeah, so if I had to if I had to recap, um, you know, thinking about this in the opening, I didn't quite like weakening this position b eight c seven. Um, g three to h four was like an interesting move. Uh, I think I still think that Black should have taken the opportunity to make these trades. Uh, try to even out the position, get rid of my established guy on c5 a bit, even at the cost of weakening the back rank. Um, but yeah, g7 to f6, uh, <clears throat> yeah, as the position kind of morphed, well, and, and of course I missed my shot, but this position was still like pretty good for me. Um, here, uh, yeah, so this was like a critical position here because I thought, well, what if, what if black plays for this uh, try and tries to get some, you know, advantage? Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of this is is going to be pretty unclear. Um, but you know, like these kinds of positions, yeah, there's a big there's a big shot. In fact, now that I have the computer on it, it looks like. Uh, in this position, after here, here, takes here, yeah, it's giving, yeah, it's giving this shot right away. So even like a few moves, yeah, and that makes sense. It's giving this shot even like a few moves earlier than what I was kind of calling for it because, you know, this is this is winning for black. So, yeah, there, I, I feel like this move eleven was critical in that. There was a chance maybe for Black to start trying to drum up counterplay. Instead, he got passive, and that really did allow me to call the shots when I played here. Uh, I called the shots. I I guess the move that I played was fine, and I went into this uh, end game. I didn't really know. Like I, I I missed that Black had this route. Um, but instead of f f6 to g7, yeah, actually apparently with uh, uh, not that, but yeah, with f2 to g3, I had a way. Uh, I had a way to uh, win the game. I didn't see that, but this this structure, um, 
I mean, it was just, it was a little bit better for white. And, you know, by the time that I got it into this kind of thing, uh, black just had to play precisely in order to do that. And, and luckily, I was able to out-calculate. I, I ended up finishing the game with like 18 seconds on my clock. My opponent still had about five minutes. So I think the time, the time just really had to be invested around here at the very end to find a way to draw. But uh, yeah, very interesting game. Uh, if you have comments, leave them below. Thank you, guys.